Hi all, welcome to today's uh, Jenkins office hours for GSOC. We're really excited because uh, Jenkins is participating this year as part of the Continuous Delivery Foundation's GSOC organization. And that organization has just been accepted into GSOC. So uh, Jenkins is moving right along for our GSOC participation. And we are very, very happy about that. We have a number of very good project proposals. Um, there's a link in the doc to the proposals that uh, and the meeting doc is on the calendar invite. I will also put the link right now in our chat for this call so that just to make sure you all have it. Um, there isn't any huge new news on the projects that are listed there, although there are there is one new one that's been PR'd, which maybe we'll have time to look at today. And um, there's a draft proposal from Mark, which also we should look at if we have time. Mostly, we just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has been involved so far. Like, great work. I'm so happy this is all moving forward well. And we want to answer student questions about this year's GSOC participation because it is slightly different this year. Also, questions from mentors are very welcome. I've put some notes in this doc. Maybe I'll share. <laughs> oh. Um, I put I put the doc in the um, the chat, and that has some notes that actually has been circulated before from GSOC itself. Just changes for this year's rules. Why? Okay, this is a very funny question. Oh, like you might be able to answer this. Why can I not see the share symbol for sharing right now on my on my Zoom screen? I would yeah, guess okay. you're... Yeah, you use CD of Jenkins for Zoom. Yes, that's correct. Uh, so sure. you should be able to do that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm connected with my personal account, so I definitely don't okay. see this option. Yeah, that might be one. Okay, great. So uh, thank you once again. And this um, just simple links to the Continuous Delivery Foundation's GSOC page and links to our project ideas. We still are open for more project idea proposals and mentors are still welcome to add their names onto any project ideas that interest them. So I've given a few links to, to guidelines on how to do both those things. The differences for GSOC this year include a smaller project size. That's the main difference and it's in terms of coding time, it's quite a difference. So the coding time has been reduced by half. So this is something that students need to really keep in mind and mentors should really keep in mind as they discuss and create their own applications to GSOC. Um, which this means that like previous year's projects that you look at or you think of previous year's project proposals, do not expect yours to be the same scope. You will be setting yourself up for a difficult time because you're not expected to work the same amount of hours. And the coding period will be over 10 weeks and there is some flexibility on when you choose those weeks to be during the summer. And this is recognition of the fact that during the pandemic, people's schedules are really under stress. Also, the other intention is that GSOC would like to open up the program to a more diverse set of applicants. So not everyone is um, able to commit that much time. Uh, so this is a way to enable more people to engage. And eligibility requirements have changed. So previously, GSOC applicants were enrolled in post-secondary academic programs. Um, and now that the variety of academic programs that students can come from have really expanded. So it's not just accredited university programs. It can be licensed boot camps um, for coding and community colleges and many other programs. So do we have any questions on this? On changes for GSOC this year? That it's more of an admin type question. Like, do you have any questions on how this will affect your work or the, the timing of your work or the rhythm of your work or the scope of your work? Okay, <laughs> if you, you can ask those questions later at any time. 
Um, also, do you have any questions on the project ideas that are listed or any project ideas that you are thinking of that may not even be on that project idea list yet? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I have a question uh, uh, about that project, uh, Plugin Installation Manager Tool Improvement. In that uh, last uh, in last uh, meeting, Oleg mentioned that uh, there are, uh, our tool does not uh, work uh, like as it is expected with different. I think other. I think he mentioned update centers, uh, but uh, mirror was mirror term was also uh, like uh, introduced. So uh, I just want to know like what are the different types of uh, update centers or mirrors from which the plugins are installed or downloaded. Like, if is there any uh, source or website from where I can get that information. Um, uh, like, I I, with question. Hmm. Okay, so there are two entities. One is mirror. Uh, one is update center. These terms uh, are basically completely different. So when we talk about mirrors, so what it means, it's uh, basically on both sides with automatic uh, selection of a mirror. So for example, when you go to the Jenkins website, click the download button, and uh, you will download, for example, Jenkins 4 file uh, from a mirror uh, located uh, close to you. For that, uh, we use uh, mirror bits um, and the other bits of infrastructure. Uh, and basically when you download plugins, it can still go through a mirror uh, because uh, um, the download thing uh, may be automatically resolved uh, to a mirror. Um, update center itself, it's rather a separate entity. So it's not a uh, virtual infrastructure with load balancing. In uh, Jenkins, it's possible to have multiple update centers. For example, uh, in the Jenkins project, we host an update center for weekly releases, an update center for each uh, of uh, five most recent LKS baselines and also experimental update center. All these update centers are generated using the same code. Um, so it's uh, Jenkins infrastructure slash update center two GitHub repository. Uh, but uh, there is also an opportunity to create uh, other update centers. So for example, uh, you can uh, find the Giuseppe project in uh, the GitHub, uh, in Jenkins GitHub. Also, uh, there are multiple vendors like CloudBees offering the update centers. And basically what it means that, uh, yeah, there is an instance to which you can connect and which can provide you a set of plugins to download. Um, these uh, instances may have completely different set of plugins, completely different set of uh, uh, rules uh, like they behave. But from the Jenkins standpoint, you can just connect to this, uh, like we call it update site actually, and download these plugins. And Jenkins might uh, be configured to source plugins from multiple update sites if needed. So one thing I have, uh, yes. Like uh, from those update centers, we get a JSON kind of, like we get a JSON uh, file. Or in that JSON, everything is mentioned, like what, what are the plugins they are there and all those uh, on all those things? Yes and no, because uh, there is a JSON file and indeed it provides a uh, significant amount of information like plugin list and dependencies. But it's not uh, the only endpoint uh, being exposed by update center. So for example, uh, if you have seen a plugin site uh, on the Jenkins page, uh, you can see that uh, there is uh, documentation, there are uh, links to issue trackers, etc. All this information is also supplied by the Jenkins Update Center. Uh, but uh, there is one thing that um, each Update Center may be providing different information. So for example, uh, there are Update Centers which uh, do not uh, expose labels, or which were not exposing labels before. Uh, they can provide so, for example, Cloud BCI, it's update center supplied by Cloud BCI. It wasn't provided with labels at some point. And uh, what it means that uh, there are update centers which generally expose more or less the same interface, but the interface is still different. And for example, uh, one thing which you, how you can easily reproduce it using plugin installation manager is uh, checksums. 
because uh, plugin installation manager supports uh, only SHA uh, 256, uh, but uh, there are update uh, centers uh, which still provide SHA 1. And in the, this case, plugin installation manager generates a warning, so JSON files might be the same. Long story short, it's not uh, just a JSON. Bad news is that we don't have a formal specification of uh, update center and formal specification of uh, information uh, being exposed by the update center. So different documentation may provide different information. And it might be one of the subjects for this project is to actually have a standard specification of what update center should provide. Example is a yeah. proposal. Hmm. So, uh, like uh, in this proposal, I also have to like uh, provide alternatives of, or uh, decide one thing what uh, update center should provide information, like in which format. No. Yep. Okay. Like uh, if uh, I am hoping that uh, JSON is uh, been provided, but uh, the update center is providing in some other format, then what we have, like. How can we? Oh, um, what I should say. How can we expect them to provide the information in our required way? Like, how can we implement our standard? No. Firstly, somebody needs to define the standard. Once it's defined, uh, actually, it's quite easy to enforce that. Example: Jenkins uh, can just uh, verify the retrieved data and uh, print your warnings uh, if uh, the update center does, uh, isn't fully compatible with the expected specification. But to do that, you first need uh, this specification because currently yeah, it's just uh, undocumented. And one more thing, like uh, about the formats, like what are the different, because I, I feel the JSON is, uh, I think, perfect for this, uh, our purpose of downloading and getting the information about plugins and their dependencies. But uh, like, do you suggest any other way, like any other alternative to the JSON format? Well, uh, JSON format is just a format. Uh, the, specification, the specification is really about data being supplied in this format. Because you may have JSON, which misses some fields, and the plugin installation manager might be unable to process it and to actually download the plugins. So, okay, okay, I... about specification, it's not just about saying that it's JSON, but about uh, defining what date is. Okay, okay, got it. Like, what are, what keys should be there in that JSON and like that? Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you for your questions. Any any other questions? So oh, I have question. a... Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you go ahead, then I will ask. Um, yeah. yeah, there was a question from Aditya in the chat about uh, how uh, to contact uh, mentors uh, if you have doubts. So currently, each project listed, uh, each project ID listed on the Jenkins website, it defines contacts. And you should use these contacts in order to reach out uh, to potential mentors. If you use these contacts and don't get a response, just uh, let orc admins know. Because in this case, uh, yeah, something is broken. But if you talk about cloud events uh, ID, uh, which is listed as an example, I'm pretty sure that uh, the project ID page uh, references cloud native seek. So you can go to its mailing list, to its Twitter channel, and uh, you can uh, use uh, this information to uh, connect to people. Just a second, I'm checking it actually. And the, the cloud native seek meets on Fridays the time has just moved a little bit earlier, so it's actually at 12 UTC. Yeah, so yeah. it's every Friday. We, we welcome people to come in. You can ask your questions. Um, the lead mentor for the cloud events mm -hmm. proposal 
generally attends the stake. So it's a good time to speak with him. Yeah. So that, that's quite nice. And um, I don't think the PR is in yet, but just this morning I was talking to someone else who's really good at events <laughs> and yeah. he might be mentoring as well. So we might have like such a good mentor team on that. I uh, fingers crossed. Actually, I noticed that uh, the, this project ID is uh, referencing the documentation seek, not cloud native seek. Oh, the link is wrong. Great. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm fixing it right now. Thank you, Oleg. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, generally you just go to the project ID page and there are contacts. And you don't have to wait for a meeting. Uh, yeah, there are meetings on Fridays. But there are synchronous channels like uh, Gitter or mailing list, and you can use them at any moment. Actually, we have um, some docs up. I can be, if I can find it. Um, I'll put it. I'll put it in the meeting notes actually as well, and I'll put it on the the page, the proposal page as well. So you have access to those docs because they list to the the Gitter channel if that's not already on there. And um, yeah, thank you, Oleg. And the Gitter channel is a good place to ask and also come. You can write notes in the um, HackMD docs for the SIG meeting as well. Even if you're not able to attend, you can put in a note of something you want to ask, and then we can address that question in the meeting. And those meetings, if they tend to be recorded and in any case, notes are always taken. Um, so I have a question um, regarding the cloud events also. So should I ask here or like, um, should I just ask in the Gitter, um, as you said, like that would to um, ask in the Git, Gitter native seek? You can always ask he it doesn't hurt. So usually we separate uh, questions to two parts. So firstly, we talk about process questions, other questions which uh, basically address all project ideas. But uh, if there is no other questions and topics, we can discuss specific projects at office hours. But so you're welcome If you have a ask. question, uh, just uh, bring it on. Um, okay. Um, so um, I was just asking, um, I read all the through um, what cloud events is like the architecture and all the stuff and going through the documentation of cloud events. But um, I talked to Vabo also who is the mentor about this. Um, so in this project, there is like, um, we have to um, subscribe to a particular cloud event, uh, like there from one is a source and second, we have to capture that particular cloud events in the Jenkins. So in order to um, start that particular listener, um, so where can I reference that particular code? So, so I'm just, I want to um, um, listen for that. I want to subscribe for that particular cloud event. So where, so which, um, I can use as a reference to study that further. Um, so as I have to make a plugin for, with a global configuration to set which cloud event I have to subscribe. Is there is any plugin which I have, which I can reference? Um, um, No immediate answer from me. I'm not uh, familiar with cloud events. Well, generally, cloud events is a mechanism of delivering uh, events, and uh, you can take a look at plugins which actually are based on the web hooks. So, for example, plugins like the GitHub branch source, the GitLab branch source, uh, and uh, many others. For example, Docker traceability plugin. All of them uh, basically operate in reactive mode. So they receive events from uh, webhooks and then uh, address uh, these events. And you can do the same for cloud events. It's just another API which is being invoked. 
but uh, yeah, you can receive this um, event and then uh, provide an engine which somehow triggers handlers inside Jenkins. Because uh, my understanding that cloud events will rather be firstly event receiver and secondly a set of extension points uh, so that uh, somebody can subscribe to this event. So for example, uh, you have an event uh, like a job completed and you have job completed listener extension points so that any plugin can subscribe and uh, to do something. And then uh, potentially uh, through extension points, you can uh, glue cloud events into existing ecosystem. So for example, build triggering support uh, and yeah, other things like that. I guess the GitHub Checks API plugin is a good example. Um, Kesi did some really great work on, you know, the, the listening part of it and the, um, mm -hmm. the publishing part of it. You can have a look at his proposal. It was one of the best proposals I've seen. So it, it's quite detailed on how he managed to implement the listeners. Uh, it's, it's similar to that. So if you look at his proposal, you'll get a very good idea of how the, what, what Oleg was talking about. So. Yeah, have a look at that proposal. I can put it in the chat. I have it. So I yeah, can... sure, please. Yeah. I'll put it in the GSOC channel. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, Sega, can I just double check what your question were you asking for an example implementation for jenkins on something yeah yeah, yeah. okay Maybe i for a listener part yeah yeah for the listener part okay yeah so that i can make a demo um for a proposal with some proof of concept um that would be good you know for me um yeah i guess for the project at least I, I will pass your question on um, and see if I can have more information for you. Um, it's a it's a good uh, question. I think the idea of how you would have the pipeline emit events and in what standard is a pretty interesting one as well. That might very well be part of this work. Good. Any other questions? or comments, proposals, things you want to discuss. Yeah, so one thing we need to discuss is how the Jenkins community will be creating this, uh, the Continuing Delivery Foundation team going forward. Because for example, we have Jenkins JSOC meetings, uh, but uh, there have been no events, office hours, or whatever organized by the Continuous Delivery Foundation last year. And uh, the question is, how do we coordinate? How do we communicate this year? And how we ensure that uh, all orca means are in sync? Also mentors and potentially students. Yes, I think that mm -hmm. probably should be brought up at the CDF level. Um, and we can discuss that with other org admins from other projects within the, C the yeah. CDF GSOC org. But um, I think certainly having, um, I was going to say co-located meetings, but you know what I mean, virtually. So would actually be really great. I think it would be really good for mentors. I think it'd be good for the orgs. I think it would be really good for students. So, yeah. Yeah, I have a... Uh, yeah, you so potentially on. just uh, rename uh, this meeting and to invite other projects as one of the options because uh, I do not see particular need in having two separate open office hours for Jenkins and for the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Uh, but yeah, I might be wrong. Yeah, m you you may very well be right. I 
The only reason I would hesitate on that is I don't know how much student questions are going to pick up or how much those questions will be held almost in quasi private channels or on the Gitter channel between students as they develop their proposals mm -hmm. and mentors. I would think now would be the time when students start really grappling with with very precise questions as they try and write out their proposals and, and get, you know, more hands on um, with, with what they develop. But I can see I can see the value in, in holding the events together as well. I'm just I'm just mindful of the fact that there are, are a lot of projects within the G, the CDF GSOC org. So if we're all together asking questions on disparate projects, it might there might be a lot of noise. Well, we can see. We'll definitely keep an eye on it. And I think we should do some uh, group group org wide meetings for sure. I like the communication channels. I, I guess CDF operates on Slack, right? And, yeah. And yeah. Oh, yes. Let me add that, actually. I will add the CDF GSOC Slack to this doc, yeah. to this chat. And um, that is a very good resource. Thank you, Slayton. So, so you used a, you used a, a keyword that I made a mistake with last year. And so I was going to use this as an excuse to highlight other people should not make the same mistake I made last year. You use the word private and communication in talking about developing a a proposal and we've intentionally asked people to keep all their communications in public so that they others can learn from the questions that are asked so yes you're developing a project proposal it will uniquely be your project proposal but we still expect that instead of contacting a mentor directly by one-on-one -on -one, one message that you use the public channel so that the mentors can answer publicly and and don't be shy yes we're all going to make mistakes yes we're going to learn from each other but it's intentionally a public communication not a private communication so to be clear our ask is that students do not privately dm their mentors they do it That's, all on really open public communication channels okay um, unless there is truly something that needs private communication, you know, where it's, hey, you have offended me and I, you said something that was completely unacceptable or things like that, but, but questions of a technical nature, absolutely, I think they should be public. Oleg, did I say it well? Did I learn my lesson from last year? Yes and no, because you're totally right if you talk about the Jenkins organization. The problem that uh, for the continuous delivery foundation, uh, there was no real policy defined last year and each project was operating uh, as before. So I cannot say for sure, for example, whether the continuous delivery foundation would like to change the framework of how we operate, probably not. At least it's my assumption for this year. Uh, but uh, yeah, there might be different uh, policy, for example, for escalations uh, to Oracle means uh, this year. There might be a different way of communicating between projects. So, for example, whether we will have uh, joint demos or not. Last year, again, I think this is the foundation didn't uh, do demos uh, for projects. So, if you maintain a Jenkins framework as before, um, then yeah, all uh, it applies. If we stop doing some bits, uh, then yeah, maybe not. But for public communications, historically, it was really helpful for everyone, uh, especially for students who were making their proposals. Yeah, at least for me, it's a it's a pretty common mistake that I make, thinking that I'm the only one with a question. And, and that is such a common mistake and it's, it's completely false. Inevitably, if I have a question, someone else was a little too shy to ask the same question. So don't be shy. Ask the question, admit it publicly, and it's great for us to tell you, talk publicly. And not only that, what I will say is that, you know, Mark gave the example, if, if you're having a problem with someone, you might wanna DM them privately. What I would say is if you're having a problem with someone, you should speak to us. Like you don't, okay. you do not need to fight, fight that out with someone. Like just, just come talk to, you know, myself or Oleg or Mark or, or anyone else um, in the org team. And, and we will be very happy to um, talk with you and, and hear any issues you're having. Any, any, you know, it can't, it doesn't have to be like complex. It can even just be like, 
I don't, you know, I don't understand this. I, I don't understand what this person meant. It can be anything. So, you know, we're really here for being that sort of resource as well. So. Okay. And this, so this is how to join the CDF Slack. I'm putting it in our channel. And then the CDF Slack, once you're in that, the GSOC channel is just hash GSOC. So pretty straightforward. And I will put that in this doc as well. Yeah, yeah there's a couple of layers of organization, which can be maybe a little more confusing this year, but hopefully the confusion, we, we will sort out our communication on that. So we will not feel confusing and then you'll just have extra resources to support you. That's more the goal. Yeah, kind of now we will have the Gitter GSOC and then the CDF GSOC as well. So, I mean, the two GSOC. Yeah. That would be good to put on the GSOC page, I guess, um, of, of, of Jenkins.io yeah. slash GSOC, yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Be, right? Yes, we should update. Um, I have a question. Um, like, not a question, but um, uh, last time whenever I also tried to uh, sign in with Slack, um, it says it doesn't have a... a Oh, no, okay, that's just my fault. Okay, fine. Sorry. I'm sorry. Did what, is there? A, did you have a question? No. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Do you have any more questions on? Um, the changed org structure for this year or communication or any any other questions like that. I just wanna make sure that the information we have is as clear as possible for you. And I will say that's a really good suggestion. We will update that page. Another question, uh, organization-wide, uh, do we want to have uh, org admin mailing list? Uh, because uh, current situation that uh, we have on the Slack and if I recall correctly, CDF, uh, yeah, uh, CDF Slack is on free plan. So it means that uh, at some point, uh, all the history will be lost. And uh, the history is essential in a Google Summer of Code. Um, we can have, I mean, we can use that Slack channel, but what I think we should do is have the mailing list. I think that was, works really well. And likely that should be, um, yeah, CDF wide. Yeah, we can create the Jenkins uh, one this year, but yeah, practically if you talk about uh, a single organization, uh, it's five four admins, but you have a, a CDF one. Any other questions? Project ideas, general GSAC questions, work. Should we go over, um, should we go over Mark's um, draft project idea on the GSAC page? Uh, uh, uh. Mark. Sure. So, okay, if I share my screen, please do. All right. Let me let me get there. Just a minute. A little bit slow on the uptake. Sagar had a question with regard to login on the Slack channel. Did you get the answer to your login on the Slack channel question, Sagar? Before we before I get dabbling into the this draft proposal. Uh, yeah, so um, in order to get into the Slack channel, they said I, I need a mail with um, opsmx.io op, mail. So how can I get that mail? Um, yeah, and and I I apologize, but I don't I don't recognize that, and I I would be surprised if that were actually required. So that that may need some investigation separately because I I don't recognize that requirement. Opsmx is certainly a a, a significant contributor to things, but. I don't know why you would have to have a, a mail address in their domain. 
I guess Himanshu is also facing same. Yeah, like it's uh, required. Uh, it is saying like it is required either that from that domain, op op opsmx dot io or opsmx dot com. That's why I use it. So, Sagar, maybe if you would be willing to, sh if you're comfortable sharing your screen and would be willing to share your screen showing the failure, that will help the yeah, rest sure. of us understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. So can I? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so are you able to see my screen? Yeah, so I think if you click the button continue, continue with Google, I would expect it to work. Uh, okay. No, huh? Wow. Is there it, that that option Max uh, has a drop down menu? Is there is there another domain? No. No. So me, just let me let me log in with Google. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's. Yeah, maybe Slack has uh, changed uh, the sign up form because you can see in the bottom uh, there is explicit question. You don't have uh, an email address from one of these domains. Contact mm -hmm. the workplace administrator for an invitation. And actually, it's how it was before. So before uh, they will by invite uh, uh, things. So um, maybe at some point we had uh, John Zink, uh, but uh, when I was joining CDF, it was also uh, it also required uh, getting an invitation from someone. That looks to be a glitch of some kind. <laughs> I will ask um, within the CDF and just yeah. check. Yeah, definitely think it uh, to OpsMX isn't correct. Uh, so, but yeah, it's just whomever created the workspace at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so everyone is saying this. Okay. So it's it's an outstanding problem. Okay. Right. No problem. We'll have an answer for you for sure, very shortly. Yeah, so, Car Car is great with interacting with with CDF. So let's do that. Okay, if I share my screen and yes. the, here was here was the draft proposal or the I need to use the right term. This is a project idea that was being offered on pipeline step documentation generator improvements. So. I believe it was Sagar actually who had started a look at another topic, REST API automated automation that was using this tool as a pattern, but there are some improvements that this specific tool still needs. And so this could be another project idea. And that was the, that was the reason for this one. And, and here the idea is that the Jenkins pipeline step reference in the documentation is difficult to read. And it that difficulty is is exam is is painfully obvious in things like, well, let's look at this one, read file, where okay, this page loaded quickly. That's very nice, but it's it's missing an awful lot of context that could could help a reader. And now that one is a very simple example. Here's one that wait while this notice is spinning ball. And here is this enormous page that if I were to expand each of the items on this page, it's a 60, 60 page printed, printed um, document. So it's huge and, and very hard for, for a novice, someone who is just deciding, ooh, I want to do checkout. They say, I need to check out with Git because that's typical, but they have to look and they have to find it here and know to expand it. So the idea is let's improve that by splitting instead of one big checkout page, let's have many little checkout pages, one for Git, one for Perforce, one for Subversion, etc. So the idea was study the documentation generator code base, and, and now this is the embarrassing one. Uh, read the documentation feedback from writers, from, from people who read it, and, 
the challenge here is sometimes it's got profanity in it. Sometimes it's got uncomfortable phrases in it. Sometimes it says things that may leave you unsettled. So don't, don't be offended by it, but just be aware that there are people who give very direct comments about, oh, this is weak or this isn't what I want. And that this is the, the conceptual idea is let's improve this documentation so that pipeline steps are a better experience for users than they are right now. Questions? So the coding, oh, the coding portion of this is actually Java code. And it's, it's a lot of manipulation of, it uses some really interesting technology to load up Jenkins plugins and read documentation from inside the Jenkins plugin. And so for me, I think, I think the tool that's doing this is fascinating. And the way it does it is, is quite amazing. It, it actually uses the compiled plugins to generate the documentation of plugins. Cara, was that the sort of thing that you were envisioning that I would, that I would do as the introduction? Yes, that introduction is very welcome. And then I wanted to discuss what we needed, uh, how we can move this forward from draft to accepted as well. Yes, I th and I, th I think it's ready to be ex ready to move to accepted. It's got one of our standards is it needs to have a, a viable list of issues that are friendly for newcomers and it has those. Um, they are they are in our Jira Jira system. Um, here's the that issue, and then there should be a dash 